So our opening verse this morning is in Psalm 127, which we'll read in a minute. We'll look at Psalm 127, uh, verse 3 through 5. But I, I want to start out this message by telling you that some of you already know this. One of the things that is true is I'm not really that good at like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Fourth of July, these holiday and different special day type messages. It's not the easiest thing for me. Uh, I just find them to be a little more challenging because I always want to make sure we're saying what God wants us to say. But it's so much easier to just give the word and let the word say it, you know? But I don't see any scriptures that say Happy Father's Day. There's, that's, that's kind of a dumb joke, but there's a lot of things in the word about for, for fathers and we're gonna share, but I just want you to know that in, in preparing for this morning, um, I, I felt the need to sort of speak from the heart things that are uh, what I would consider from experiences and that those are experiences from a dad experiences from someone who wants to follow the Lord the best they can as a dad <coughs> and some of the observations that I've seen uh, you know, in, in my life for the time been around, so it's just a little different than what I would normally speak, and I hope this, I hope it's helpful, uh, I do, I hope it's helpful, but it's definitely different. So let's open it up with Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5. This is what the Bible says. It says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Now, we pick this passage because it, it says so much. It has so much to, to say. And actually, I'm not even going to expound this passage today. Instead, I'm going to ask you to write this down and let it become a part of your regular Bible study. Because you can go back and look at this passage and be reminded, especially when, when life isn't doing so, or life isn't so fun, or when your family is not in, in perfect shape. I mean, know that family can be difficult. I was waiting for food. I can tell the hands are going to go up, no, no question. Families can be hard, and you know, things are ever perfect. They're never perfect. And I think if we want to say anything about it, we can say, Sometimes family and, and family unit is good. Sometimes. But sometimes, it, in the world we live in, the days we live in, it's challenging. Very challenging. And so, this passage can say a lot to you. can really encourage you, remind you what a blessing it is to have a family. What a blessing it is to be an influence over a young person. And I say it that way because uh, you, you, know, you might be here today and you're you're not a father, but if you have influence over some a, a young person, someone that you can be an example to, and someone you can teach, then I can tell you there's a that father figure about you, and so it, it helps you as well. And it is an honor and a blessing to be able to give to this next generation what we have learned and received. Amen. It's, it's a real blessing. So uh, go back, take a good look at that passage. I might refer back to it, but for right now. Um, that's our opening passage. I want to speak to you about a couple of things. I actually wrote three things down that I just would like to share. Uh, as I share, I think you'll understand. I was thinking about things from the perspective of just my day-to-day -day life, just life in general. And I started thinking about it from my dad's perspective. I started thinking about all the, the different people I know that are dads. I started thinking about the people I know that didn't have dads, people who do and their dads are like a jerk. Right? I mean, no, there are people like this. People who, you know, their, their dads are awesome. You start thinking, really thinking about things from, a, from different angles and, and Thinking about them from experience, from my life's experience, just going through life and, 
and who I need and what I've seen. And, and I thought, you know, it would be a good idea to take from that wisdom that, and I want to give God the glory for that, for the, from the wisdom that he gives. Because without God, I tell you, there's, there's only worldly wisdom without God. Only worldly wisdom. And worldly wisdom doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. It may get you out of trouble temporarily, but you end up right back in it. But the wisdom of God that comes from above, as we probably quoted from the Father of Lights, good gift, that wisdom, He gives, and He doesn't give it with uh, favoritism, He gives to all us. That kind of wisdom, you don't want to lose. You want to keep it with you. So, three things I want to share. The first one is uh, forgiveness. The second one is don't repeat. The third one is don't make excuses, make decisions. So let's start with the first one. Forgiveness. I was thinking about everybody who would come to church that are not dads. Thinking about all the people that have been affected by dads. People that have experienced the negative things that happen in life, and maybe from, from dads. I'm thinking about just everybody else. So this is for everyone else right now. This first part of this message is for everybody else. And that is, I want to encourage you to have forgiveness. I want everybody, if you'll follow me, you'll understand. There are people today who live with hurts, with pains, with bitterness, with hardened hearts. There are people who live with memories, things that have happened so long ago. And those negative things that have affected your life, some, for some people, it happened either because of dad or, you know, a bad decision made by dad or, you know, just dad wasn't there or just somehow it was connected to death. I know some people who they've lost their dads. Their dads have passed away within many years and they're still struggling with these pains that and this bitterness that, that turns into unforgiveness. And it hurts all of those people in their lives. I was thinking about that. And I was thinking how what, what is it that God would have us to know? Because everybody's been affected by a dad in one way or another. In one way or another. And so I think the message is this. Forgive. To, to be a person who forgives. So let's think about that for a minute. Because there's a lot of reasons why even when negative things happen, we hold on to it. Maybe, you know, whether it's big or really big or just, it's really just affected your life. We can make a lot of, or we can say a lot of reasons why we won't let something go. And we might even be justified in our minds or justified maybe in the things we hear in our era you know, the media says this is right and this is wrong. And so we, we feel justified why we hang on to things. When we hang on to those things, it affects how we live. We actually start to do things because of that. And if you think about it, it, it actually changes the results. It changes what God wants for your life. What God has planned, what God wants to do, the future he sets up for his people is affected by something negative that happened with some dad somewhere that is still being held on to. It's done, it's gone, and by the way, don't, don't get me wrong, do not hear this, don't hear these words, get over it, because that's not what I'm saying. That's a cold way to say that, no, I'd never say that, just get over it, no. You don't want to say, just get over it. But we, the way the Father, our Father in Heaven would have us know, is that when we don't forgive, even if you feel justified, even if the wrong was bad and intentional and all of this, 
If we don't forgive, it is us, you and I, God's children, who set a pace for our future that is, is forever changed because we won't forgive. We won't put it into the hands of God. And so the difficulty of our life continues. And there's stains in our life that come from something somewhere that some dad did or said or even didn't do. And so the first thing I want to say to everybody that's not a dad, and of course you can be dads, maybe you've been affected some way, and you find it still messing with your life today. Let's forgive. Let's do what our Heavenly Father taught us to do. Why? The question could come up, why should I? Well, I'll end our first point with this simple thing. Because at some point, you're going to need forgiveness too. See, that man, that person, that father figure was, a, was and is a human being. Faulty, frail, filled with mistakes. Filled with, with problems that he received from his father and those influences and so forth and so on. And the reality is, every single one of us are that same person. You and I, we make mistakes. We're faulty. We're frail. We're human. And we're going to do things at times that's just going to go bad. It's just not going to be right. You're going to look back and go, I wish I had never done that. How many of you have already been there? Amen. Half of you. Father, <laughs> would you... I can add a half an hour? Okay. As for those who are dodging, them, I'm just kidding, I'm playing. It's be, we need to forgive. The same, it might even sound selfish. I want to forgive because I want to be better. Well, guess what? Whether it sounds selfish or not, it's God's way to forgive, Amen. to have mercy, Amen. because we're going to need mercy too. The second thing I want to say is to the dads that are here. Now, when I say that, I have to take it into account all the dads that aren't here. And, and by the way, that don't mean men that belong to this church. I'm not referring to them. Right now, Pastor Angel and Sister Lydia are preaching for Pastor Omar, the Father's Day message. Some, are, some of our men are, are out of state seeing that, taking care of their, their their old elderly dads and so forth. So I'm not talking about people who aren't here today. I'm talking about taking into consideration people that aren't serving God, men that aren't serving God. I'm not talking to them. I want to talk to the guys who are here. You know why? Why I say that? Because men who are in church on Father's Day, they're men of God. They may not be perfect. No, wait, wait, wait. Let me take that back. They're not perfect. It's not a baby thing. It's not a baby. But any man who's in the house of God on Father's Day, when they could easily tell their family, I work hard, I'm tired, I want to kick back today, that's my gift for Father's Day. Any man who's here on Father's Day, any dad, you're a man of God. You have a desire to honor your Father in heaven. You have an open heart, an obedient heart to be in the house of God in a day where you can easily, you know, say, nah, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my Father's Day and chill. I want to speak to you guys. The message that I believe God has for you this morning is don't repeat. We talked about forgiveness. And all of us need to have forgiveness for the imperfect dads and the mistakes they made. But you, you and I, dads, we need to learn a very valuable lesson, a hard lesson. 
And this lesson is this. Our next generation and every generation after that is affected by who you are and by who I am. By who we are, what we are, and what we do. And for that matter, what we don't do. Our world, our, our nation, our world is affected by who we are. Whether we really think about it that way or not, it's just true. If you think about it, what you do or don't do right now in your influence over the next generation will change what they do or don't do and how they think about things. And they might make decisions based on what we've influenced them with. And so the, the, maybe the pains we've received from our bad decisions, we unwillingly, unknowingly, we gave it over to the next generation. And it's a matter of time before they go and do the same thing and repeat the mistakes that we've made. Amen. This is a reality. Like I said at the beginning, I'm speaking from more from from uh, the experience of being a, a child of God, a son of God who's been walking with the Lord and has been a father for 25 years now. I've learned some things. And a lot of the stuff I learned the hard way. I really did. So the message is this. Well, of course you can repeat the good things you've learned. Of course you can. That's good. That's great. But, you know, there's an old saying. Good, uh, good news or bad news travels way further than good news. You ever heard that before? I think that's the same with, with uh, you know, with influence. I think good influence is good and it's powerful. We, we strive for that, but it's harder to do. And it travels with less distance. But bad influence, it, it, it don't take any effort for the next generation to fall in line and keep going so it travels really far. When there's bad influence, it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Yeah, is it, everybody listening? Yeah. Or you guys already checked out? <laughs> Thinking about after what's going to happen. <laughs> don't check out, check in. Man. So again, don't repeat. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, I, I, want to, I don't want that word to sound really uh, cliche. You know, people say, be careful, be careful. You know, it's just like a, it's a cliche word. I, I don't want to talk like that. I don't want to use it like that. I want to, I want to say, be full of care. Be circumspect. Be focused. That kind of careful. If we're not careful, we will repeat. The very things that we didn't like. Or the very things that we never wanted to become. We, we become that if we're not careful. I would be willing to bet, I am not a betting man, but I'd be willing to bet that every single one of you has already experienced this, where you've either said something did something, a mannerism, a motion, a reaction, a, an attitude, something that you've seen, whether it was dad or somebody of influence, you've seen them do, or they did to you, or they said to you, or said in front of you, you've actually done the same thing that you didn't like. It came out from out of you, and you, you were like, man, I never ever wanted to say that. I'd be willing to bet. If you take if you think about it. You've probably already done it. I remember what the, my mom, my mom, my mom's an awesome woman of God, by the way. I, I love her to death. She's an amazing woman. God has really raised her up. But when we were growing up, my mom, because she had five kids and we had a bunch of animals and stuff, there were times when she would try to get a hold of one of us and she'd go down the list of names. <laughs> Let's say she was trying to call Tony. Like, Tony, get over here! Something to tell you, come, come right now. Right? She'd be like, this my, my brothers and sisters' names and the pet. She'd say, Bart, Michael, Arlene, I, Melinda, Oreo, um, you know, Puppy, Tony. And then she'd finally get to me. And it was kind of a funny comedy thing. And I remember as a kid, I'd be like, 
I would literally be like the back here, I'm not even gonna answer until she gets to me. <laughs> Wait, you know, I just, you know, and, and as she's yelling, it's getting louder, you know what I mean? By the time she gets to mine, even the Tony! <laughs> she's already mad, I didn't, I didn't even do anything. She's just mad because she couldn't remember my name. <laughs> so I would say, when I'm a parent, I ain't never gonna do that. I have a look down the hallway. I say, no, um, turn around. I decide, I'm like, look, Brenda, sorry, Brenda. <laughs> and then after I'm done, I'm like, wait, did I just do that? I did. I can't believe it. But that's more of a lighthearted thing. But what about those things that were painful? I've seen it. I haven't seen it here. I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but if you feel wheels after, you know, wheel marks on your back. <laughs> but I've seen it. You know that scary thing when you're scared of your dad because he speaks through his teeth when he's angry. You see, for us as adults, it's kind of funny, that, but imagine a three, five-year-old little kid looking at. And imagine if at the end of that, maybe there's a whoop in your butt. And it leaves an ugly feeling, an ugly thing inside. It's funny though, because now we're adults in the lights. We're just angry and frustrated, you know, and I just go from right now. And we are repeating the very thing that we used to say, I never want to do. I never want to do that. Never said it, I'm just like, I turned out just like that person. The message to us dads for Father's Day is not to put you down. We have a hard job. If you started walking with the Lord late in life or early, hallelujah for all of it. As long as you're walking with God, you're in the right place. And here's the reality, we got a lot of learning to do still, a lot. A lot of things that we've got to get out of ourselves that we inherited from junk that we didn't like, things we didn't want, but it's there. And we got to work on getting rid of that so that we don't repeat. Does anybody follow me? Amen. Somewhere you're like, hey, that's not just a message for dads. And it's not. But I, I single out the dads today because dads, our nation needs the men. We need the men to to not be with the, this ridiculous media and, and, and TV and, and movies portray dads to be. Every every dad and TV shows and, and, and the media are all dumb idiots who don't know what they're doing. And mom's the only one that knows what's going on in the world. Let's not make that a prophecy. Let's not fulfill that by being those checked out dads who don't realize what they do will repeat. Let's change that by being men of God who say, Father, what do you want me to be? What do you call a dad? What do you call a father? And you might say, well, it's too late for me because my fathering days are over. It's never too late to change. It's never too late to change. And you might say, it's too late for all the pain that was caused. That's why we started out with our first point as Because people make excuses. People get angry when things like this are brought up. I know people who get mad at the Ten Commandments. They don't like honor your father and mother. They get mad at that commandment. And when you find out why, it's because my mother and my father, they were horrible people. How could I ever honor them? So we get mad at God and mad at His commandments because it's something someone did or didn't do. And it's still affecting. You know what, folks? This is why forgiveness is so important. Because at the end of the day, we still need to do what God wants us to do. And it's still the best. It's the best way to live ever. It's the best way to live, to honor your father and your mother. And if you can't, then it's... It's all about, well, our next generation needs 
to learn how to honor their father and mother, and they need to grow up as honorable fathers and mothers. And so even though I may have a lot of baggage and pain and struggles, I'm going to obey my father and forgive so that I can get become part of the answer again and start helping this next generation with my influence to, to teach them that it doesn't have to be the same for you. You don't have to repeat. Amen. You don't have to repeat. And by the way, repeating the difficulties and the, thing, the negative things that happen, it's not always things that happen to you. Sometimes it's things that didn't happen. You know, I've shared with you many times. My, I didn't have a father. My, my dad left when I was four, but even the first four years, he wasn't there anyway. I, I have like a memory of, I have two memories of my dad. One was in a car, car crash that I was in. He was driving too fast, and we were in the mountains, and I hit the side of the mountain, and we hit the side of the mountain, and I went through, I didn't go through it, but I hit the windshield. A total car was totaled. I woke up in a white room at four years old. So that's one memory of my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Second memory of my dad, I don't I can't picture his face. I just remember sitting on a porch with my little bag ready to go with him for a weekend, because he told me he was gonna pick me up. And about nine o'clock at night, my mom coming up saying he's not coming. I was four years old. So what I'm saying to you is there came a point in my life where I was numb and did not have any feelings at all towards my father. No good, no bad. I didn't hate him, I wasn't mad at him, nothing. I was good. And then when I became a Christian, it even became better. Because I was like, hey, I'm fine, I'm good. I'm my heavenly father, he's all I need. And then the men in my, in my life that are a blessing to me. What I didn't realize was, there is this potential to repeat, not just the bad things that happened, but the things that were non-existent. You know you can actually become an absent father? You can become that guy who lives there, but's never there? You can become that guy who, who doesn't engage with your kids and you might as well be on the other side of the world because your kids don't know you? You see that? You, you realize how you can repeat stuff, not just bad things that happen, but even the things that never happened at all. I made a decision, thanks to the wisdom of my king, that I would never leave my kids. And even if I didn't know how to be a dad, I was gonna learn how to be a dad by being them, staying with my kids. Good time for a drink of water, excuse me. <laughs> I'm learning, see? It's not meant to be a teary eye. See, that's Mother's Day, my father. Father's Day, she's got my barbecues and kicking back. I'm gonna go watch a movie today. After this, I'm gonna go get, we're gonna go pick up Grandpa Ken. Anybody remember Grandpa Ken? Could make it to service this morning. He's a little bit frail, but he's gonna make it to the movies. <laughs> I'm, 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 we're gonna go get him. We're gonna have some fun with Grandpa Ken. And guess what movie we're gonna take him to see? It's going to make you laugh. We're going to go see Wonder Woman. <laughs> On Father's Day. That's right. You heard it. <laughs> Some of you are like, did my pastor just say, oh, man, I'm out of here. <laughs> you can repeat, folks. So many of the things that affected you. Dads, I want to encourage be conscious of this. Be, be aware of this. Make a decision. The things that you didn't like. Make a decision to walk with the Lord. Walk in the Lord. And under the command of the Lord. So that you intentionally do not repeat. And if you fall short, just get back up. Keep going because the Lord loves you. And we need you. And our generations need you. Your kids need you. I don't care if they're adult kids, they need you. Whatever we can give, whatever we can be, they need you. So don't repeat. Last thing. 
is don't make excuses, make decisions. It's easy to make excuses. Well, this is what I am, take it or leave it. Hey, this is what, it was good enough for my grandfather, it was good enough for my father, it was good enough for me, and good enough for you. That's an excuse. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I got this bad temper. You know, what can I do? This is what I was raised with. Oh, wow. You're just going to have to deal with it because I just, I can't control it. I'm sorry. That's an excuse. Don't make excuses. Make decisions. And make decisions based on this. We may not have had the perfect father. As a matter of fact, we all know the reality is we did it. But we now have our Heavenly Father. Amen. And our Heavenly Father is the best example. He is the best example. And on top of his exampleship, he has given us his word. And in his word, he has given us the instruction we need to be fruitful, blessed, Influential, powerful, wise, loving, engaging. He's given us everything we need to know and everything we need to, to live out and to change not only our life and the repeating circulation of horrible stuff that happens in our family, but to change our world and everyone behind us, everyone on the, on the other side of our life. He's given us that. Everything we need to make those changes. And on top of that, on top of all that wisdom, He gives us the power to get it done. You can sit back and make excuses and live your life making excuses. Blaming. Because basically when you make excuses, you're, you're, gonna, you're basically going to blame people, blame situations, blame other things for things that you do now or don't do. But your Heavenly Father is giving you a brand new start. Pastor, what if, well, what if they don't forgive me? I can't change them. That's right. But you can change you. Amen. And you can trust in our Father. Because God, He's able to get in the hearts of everybody. Amen. Even the most stubborn, hard, mean people. Don't make excuses. Make decisions. And the decision that we need to make today, fathers, we need to decide, I'm going to stop the vicious cycle of these things that I don't like, that our Heavenly Father doesn't like. I'm going to stop the vicious cycle I'm going to stop making excuses and I'm going to make some decisions to follow my Lord's example and His wisdom. And when I do that, I know God in His power and His work will, aid, will be able to change the next generation. The next generation will do better than we will. And then if they do the same, the following generation will be even better than them. Fathers, you're a blessing. Now let's be those blessings. Let's be what God's called us to, to be. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Now let's give God some praise. Let's praise His name. Thank you, Father.